starts right now. San Antonio Police Department investigating a shooting that slanted two women in the hospital this morning. Details coming up next. Floresville police are looking for a man who they say shot two people outside a bar. We have the details about what happened. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 59 degrees to start your Saturday morning. What is the rest of the day? What does a weekend look like? Good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Saturday, October 16th. I'll smile today because it is less than 60 degrees yeah, outside. Yeah, and the humidity isn't that bad. You know, I walked out this morning, I was like, mm -hmm. Fall feeling. Fall feeling. I love it. Feeling. We gotta, you know, if you ever do join TikTok, that's it. Uh, I don't know. This I don't is know. the first one. I don't know if I could do the TikTok. Uh, you're on TikTok, right? I'm, Sarah Spivey yeah. is much cooler yeah. than us, Max. That's true. <laughs> Well, thank you guys. And the Being weather cool. is much cooler Boom. today, too. Uh, we are sitting pretty in the 50s around San Antonio and the metro area, all because of that cold front that moved through yesterday. It is currently 59 degrees at the airport, and the temperature will likely drop by a couple more degrees before we see the sunrise here shortly. It's 52 in Comfort, 56 in Bandera, 58 in Rio Medina, 59 in Canyon Lake, and 58 in New Braunfels. We've also got a stout wind from from the north at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So this weekend we're going to have that fall feeling all weekend long. Windy today and cool, a high temperature of only 72. And then tomorrow morning, many of us will start off in the 40s. So it'll be a chilly start and once again a pleasant afternoon with temperatures in the 70s. But how long will this fall feeling last? I've got a look ahead coming up in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, what started as a fun night out for two women ended up very violent. San Antonio police investigating a shooting at a bar on the city's east side. Jonathan Cotto joins us live. And Jonathan, we understand this all happened just a couple of hours ago. So what have you been able to learn so far? That's right, Sarah. This happened shortly after 2 o'clock this morning. Information is limited, but this is what we know so far. Officers responded to this bar located on Rigsby Avenue shortly after closing. They say the shooting started with a fight inside the bar, but actually happened in the parking lot. One woman was shot in the hand. The other woman was shot in the back of the neck. Now, the second woman drove herself a couple of blocks away before she ultimately called for help. Now, Max, Sarah, police say they don't have a good description on the suspect. The, both women were transported to the hospital. The woman who was shot in the hand is expected to be okay, while the woman who was shot in the back of the neck is in critical condition. This case remains under investigation. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Also new this morning, Floresville police asking for your help, trying to find a man now accused of shooting two people outside a bar. Here's what we know right now. Investigators tell us this happened last weekend at Roper's Dance Hall off 10th Street in Floresville just before 2 a.m. Police looking for this man, 25-year-old Johnny Vela III. They say Vela tried to get into the bar several times. He was denied access each time. Someone nearby then noticed Vela pull out a gun, try to stop them, take his gun away, but that person ended up being shot in the shoulder. Vela then got in the vehicle fired another shot as he was driving away. That other shot hit another individual in the wrist. Now the suspect Vela able to drive off. If you have any information that can help Floresville police help find Vela, you're asked to call Floresville Police Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, 888-808-7894. Well, recovery efforts coming to an end after officials found the body of a woman who died after her car swept away in high waters during Wednesday's storm. 52-year-old Esther Rodriguez Conde flooded in about 8 to 10 feet of water. On Thursday, the body of a 5-year-old girl was also found in a separate car. A total of five other people, including children, were rescued from those vehicles when authorities first received that call. Families in both cars were related and were on their way to school when the incident happened. Angie Torres now set to face eight years in prison, all for the role that she played in covering up the death of baby King J. Davila. Now, court records show Torres pleading guilty to tampering with evidence. Originally, officials believed baby King J. was kidnapped eight months old back in 2019. Instead, investigators say Torres helped stage the kidnapping along with the baby's parents, Christopher Davila and Beatrice Sampaio. Now, Davila sentenced to 40 years in prison. Sampaio's trial now set for November. A temporary COVID-19 memorial is beginning stages of being removed. Yesterday, volunteers were at the site, the corner of Market and South Alamo streets to take down the hearts displayed on the fence. 
The deep in our hearts memorial has been up since May 27th. More than 3,400 red hearts were attached to the fence, symbolizing those who died of COVID-19 in San Antonio. It's given uh, people in our city and visitors as well an opportunity, I think, to um, take a moment and to take pause for how this has impacted us. The hearts with photos that were not, they weren't collected by family members. Instead, they will be archived in several museums throughout San Antonio. In your morning headlines, former president, 75 year old Bill Clinton in a California hospital this morning, but latest reports show he is recovering all this in the aftermath of what is called an infection. Now, Clinton was admitted to the hospital earlier this week after feeling overly fatigued. Now, doctors later diagnosed him with a urological infection. It spread into his bloodstream. Clinton has dealt with heart problems in the past. Remember, he had a quadruple bypass surgery and a procedure to open a blocked artery. A U.S. Capitol Police officer has been arrested in connection to the January 6th insurrection. Prosecutors say Michael Riley obstructed justice when he told a contact online to remove Facebook posts showing that person in the Capitol building that day. The indictment says Riley was in a phishing-related Facebook group with that person. He sent private messages saying he was a Capitol Police officer and agreed with their political stance, but told the person they needed to take down their posts because law enforcement was investigating. Riley was not on duty during the Capitol attack. Head of the West Coast, the latest on the wildfires. Firefighters are gaining ground on one of the biggest fires in California. This fire burning nearly 17,000 acres since it started just Monday. 1,700 firefighters battling the blaze. Containment jumping to 41% overnight. Reagan Ranch, known as the Western White House during President Ronald Reagan's administration, that has been a key resource for firefighting efforts. Crews have been drawing a million gallons of water using the fire hydrant and a robust sprinkler system to protect the Reagan artifacts. Time now, 6.07, 59 degrees out. No gym, no problem. Still ahead, we tell you about the equipment you can use at home. They'll get the job done and won't break the bank. And whew, a lot of housing market situations going on right now. If you're interested in buying a home soon, you probably notice the market is not easy. Very competitive right now. Next on GMSA, quick piece of advice if you are feeling a little discouraged about that first home. The highlight of the morning, 59 degrees at 6.07 this morning. Yes, that fall feeling, it is here. Sarah Spivey will let us know how long it's going to stick around for when we come back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. So if you've been looking to buy a home recently, you probably know the market is crazy right now. Yeah, it is. Over the past several months, realtors have been seeing buyers ask buyers pay above asking price at historic levels. It's something that can easily intimidate many first time home buyers. So what can you do if you're feeling discouraged about landing your first home? It's really so insane. You know, we've seen asking prices 30% higher. People saying we don't even need an inspection. Now we spoke to a member of the San Antonio Board of Realtors. She says one piece of advice, know what you are looking for early on. Be prepared to move on it. That's the most important thing. You've got, you've still got to act quickly, but you got to do your homework and you've got to be ready. Don't lose hope. Um, even though we're active and we have good business going on, um, there's a little bit of a softening, but not much, but it's still, if, if you're prepared and ready to go forward and ready to jump on it, you can get that house. So the good news, uh, she says San Antonio's median home price of $285,000 is lower than our surrounding areas. I hear people going, ooh, <laughs> compared to Houston's two ninety six dollars and Dallas at $328,000. Oh now, Austin, goodness. get this, $560,000. So it might be expensive, but the good news <laughs> is it's not as expensive as every other major city across Texas. I mean, that's why people are moving to San Antonio and commuting to mm. Austin. Like, yeah. that price is insane. It just, Plus, it if makes you can work me... from home, why not? Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's one of the many reasons people are moving to San Antonio. That's true. It makes me nervous. I used to live in California and oh, yeah. outside of San Francisco, people would commute. Oof. And I feel uh, I feel like that's what's happening here. Yeah. All right, Sarah, Surprise. what's uh, what's going on behind you? Well, I want to show how much rain we've seen officially at the airport since the start of the month. It's been impressive. We've seen more than five and a half inches of rain at the airport. But of course, since Wednesday, many locations have seen more than five inches 
inches of rainfall. Now that it is about a two and a half inch, inches surplus of uh, above what we normally see for the month so far. And this is impressive. When you look at the yearly rainfall total so far, we've seen almost 31 and a half inches of rain. That's more than five inches above average. And then look at this time last year, we had only seen a little bit more than 18 inches of rain. So what that means is that this year we've seen more than a foot above what we had last year this time of year. So again, very impressive rainfall rates, of course, and we've still got some of the rivers that are starting to um, drain out. We've still got some flooding going on. I'll show you that graphic in just a bit, but for now we can enjoy the beautiful weather outside. It's gorgeous. It's 59 cool degrees outside right now with a wind from the north at about 10 miles per hour, even cooler up in the hill country, 51 in Comfort, 54 in Kerrville, 56 in Bandera. Look at Divine. It's 57 degrees in Divine, 58 in New Braunfels, 60 at JBSA Randolph, 65 in Pleasanton, Del Rio, 60 degrees and 50 in Rock Springs. I think temperatures could drop another couple of degrees here before we see the sunrise. So these are not yet our morning lows. We'll probably get down to about 57, 58 here in San Antonio. And winds stout from the north at about 10 to 15 miles per hour, all thanks to that cold front, which is currently working its way through the Rio Grande Valley and bringing in some much drier air as well. Dew points are down into the 40s. This is a big difference. This time yesterday, our dew points were in the 70s. It was very humid uh, this time yesterday, but we've done away with that humidity and it really won't get very humid for the next several days. We are going to see cirrus clouds throughout the day today, uh, so we'll have that milky hue to the sky and temperatures are only going to top off in the low 70s. 73 in New Braunfels, 73 in Gonzales, 71 in Kerrville. It may only stay in the 60s up in Rock Springs, 78 in Del Rio, and 77 in Catula. So today is going to be a very beautiful, very fall like day. We'll be at 60 degrees at 10, 67 at noon, mostly sunny, and 72 for that high temperature. It is going to be breezy today. North winds at 10 to 20, gusting up to 25. But towards sunset, we're actually going to see those winds calm and it's going to get chilly. We'll be in the 50s by 10 o'clock tonight and by tomorrow morning. Look at these morning lows. 49 in San Antonio for the morning low. 41 in Kerrville, 46 in New Braunfels, 43 for the morning low in Hondo tomorrow morning, and 46 in Rock Springs. Earlier, I mentioned those creeks and rivers that are still flooding. Here's a look at uh, some of those warnings in place. Now, the San Antonio River at Floresville is near flood stage, but it's actually cresting right now, so we'll be seeing that uh, go down. The worst conditions are Sandy's Creek at West, West Hoff. That's where we're seeing some major flooding, moderate flooding on the Guadalupe near Gonzales and minor flooding on the Guadalupe near Cuero. Uh, the San Antonio River at Rungi is experiencing moderate flooding. We're going to be seeing all of this drain back out into the Gulf of Mexico from our heavy rainfall that we saw Wednesday night into Thursday morning. And then eventually those flood warnings will go away. So if you are in those southeastern counties, make sure to use some extra caution around the creeks and the rivers. Now tomorrow is going to be a beautiful day as well. High temperature the low 70s will still be in the 70s on Monday as well. A little bit more noticeable humidity by the middle of the week and highs will top off in the 80s, but we really don't see any major heat waves or anything like that for the remainder of the week. Chance for rain Thursday and Friday as another front moves on through. Oh, Texas taking your AC off. Turning your heat on, opening up the window. Up the it's windows. funny because now everywhere is going to be too hot when you walk inside yeah, because everyone's going to try to compensate. It's a fine balance. <laughs> Time now, 617, 59 degrees out. Well, next on GMSA 12 on your size, Marilyn Morris tells us about which exercise equipment may be worth your sweat and your money. You recently bought a bike for your for your. I partner. did. When the pandemic first hit, I got a cheap bike. I didn't go Peloton because it's a little too pricey. Little expensive. But Amazon had some pretty good deals, especially in the beginning of the pandemic. All right. Well, sales of home exercise equipment has soared over the past year and a half, and some of it coming in with big claims, promises, and price tags. Ooh, see, I went cheaper out, mm. but it's lasted. Okay. Got my money's worth. All right. Twelve on your sides. Marilyn Moritz has which ones may be worth your sweat and your money. 
When you hear exercise bike, chances are you think of Peloton. With a big touch screen and huge selection of live and on-demand classes, Peloton has its fans and a splurgy price tag of nearly $1,500. It's the best exercise bike Consumer Reports tested, but you can still get a great cycling workout without the Peloton. You can buy an exercise bike that's a third the cost of a Peloton, sign up for the Peloton membership at $12.99 a month, and use your smartphone or tablet. A more affordable one they recommend is the finer form indoor exercise bike for $500. To get some strength training into your home workout, dumbbells are a smart option. Adjustable dumbbells are very flexible. Using a pin, dial, or lever, you can easily change the weight you're using. CR says one good buy is the Core Home Fitness Adjustable Dumbbell Set for $350. Also key for a home gym, a yoga mat for all kinds of floor exercises. For multiple needs CR suggests the pro source fit trifold folding exercise mat. Whether it's yoga, strength training, or cardio, there are plenty of apps that can help you at home too. Apps like Apple Fitness Plus, Peloton, and Equinox Plus are just a few to check out. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. You guys have like a whole a whole gym. A whole gym in your hey, garage. But I have a pink treadmill that you I'm do very have a pink proud of. You just got that. I'm very proud it's of really it. It's really cute. It's cute. Time now, 622, 59 degrees out. Well, it's never too early to talk about <laughs> We just went from working out <laughs> to food. Everything. This well, next delicious. on GMSA, we have a preview of today's new episode of Texas Eats. This is not your average cow's home. Not at all. Talk to me about what's going on with this. So when you come to Tanks, everything that you get is gonna be unique. Yeah. So, man, we just do it right. We saute our vegetables. We make sure that all of our meats are made in-house. Everything except for the pepperoni and the ham. But besides that, we make everything in-house. Dough is made fresh every day. Ooh. We make our own marinara fresh. All the items that you're getting right here were literally made this morning and put to plate. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in and you can go for one too here. Man, let's go. I'm gonna oh. go for the dunk. Oh man, I gotta go for the pour. Okay, yeah. cheers. You gotta go for The calzone, uh. look at this thing. That's a beast, here we go. the top. I mean, I'm going to open this bad boy up. Look what are you at doing? all that. Stacked. And you know what I love? The dough is still, ha it has a nice crisp texture to it. Mm -hmm. And even though it's loaded up, I mean, you guys really know what you're doing out here. This is a great bite. Next, get your stretchy pants ready. Uh, I'm just saying, I think David Elder's coming in today. And if he brings that, I'm going to need a nap. You're going to need stretchy pants. Yeah, stretchy pants and a nap. Yeah. Time now, 626, 59 degrees out. Go Spurs, go! Huge win for the Spurs. Preseason, I know, but taking on the Rockets, big dunks, big baskets. We have all the big highlights. Love that. Well, first, the Moderna booster shots. Now, the Johnson & Johnson. Next, the latest on the FDA's recommendation for everyone 18 and older to be able to get the booster shot. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday, 6.30 this morning, October 16th. We are starting to feel like fall. Do you want to do your fall feeling dance? Fall feeling. Love it. Fall feeling. Um, the San Antonio Zoo posted a video. Have you seen this? A porcupine eating a pumpkin? Oh, it's so, so adorable. cute. I love anything that the zoo posts. Yeah, they're I'm just like, good. heart, 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 heart. Super, super cute. <laughs> hey guys, I got a question. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cliche fall things, go. Uh, pumpkins, pumpkin spice latte, uh, wreaths with leaves on them. Oh, it came them. back to us. This um, is good. Flannels. Flannel, flannel, candy corn, black turtlenecks. Okay. <laughs> pumpkin carving games or, or yeah. get-togethers. Okay. Pumpkin spiced beer. You, you're really good at this. <laughs> you got them all, almost. I'm, well, I'm on that fall feeling. Do them all this weekend, because <laughs> it is going to feel like fall, not only just today, but all weekend long as well. In fact, this morning it is cool. Uh, it's 59 degrees, and temperatures will likely drop another few degrees before sunrise here. 54 in Kerrville. It's 55 in Yavaldi, 60 in Carrizo Springs, uh, 59 in Gonzales, and 58 in New Braunfels. But the biggest thing you notice I think is the lack of humidity. Dew points have gone down about 20 to 30 degrees in just the last 24 hours. This time yesterday, it was muggy outside. Dew points were in the 70s. Dew points are in the uh, 
40s right now, so it feels very, very dry outside and cool. One of the things that you could do, maybe go to a pumpkin patch this weekend. Today, uh, it's going to be cool and windy. It'll still be in the 60s, likely by noon. And even in the afternoon, we're only going to get into the 70s for the highs and the low 70s at that. So what's up with the weather? What do you need to know? Feeling like fall, as we mentioned, it's going to be chilly tomorrow morning. Temperatures in some spots will be in the 40s. And guess what? We're going to have these cooler temperatures until about midweek, but even and then it's not going to get too warm outside. So coming up, we'll talk about the forecast. We'll talk about our next chance for rain. As you know, October's already been pretty rainy, so a lot to uncover in the forecast. I'll have a look ahead in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, closing time at a bar on the city's east side ends in gunfire. And this morning, we know two women were injured. Jonathan Goto joins us live with the details. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Max. Good morning, Sarah. This all happening shortly after 2 o'clock this morning at the Vibe Sports Bar. Information is limited, but this is what we know so far. Officers responded shortly after closing. They say the shooting started with a fight inside the bar and ended up in the parking lot. Now, one woman was shot in the hand, and listen to this. The other woman was shot in the back of the neck. The second woman drove herself a couple blocks away before she was ultimately able to call for help. Now, police say they don't have a description on the suspect. The woman that was shot in the hand is expected to be okay and the woman that was shot in the back of the neck is in critical condition they were both taken to Bamsey now this case does remain under investigation we'll update you as more information is made available Max and Sarah reporting Jonathan Cotto case at 12 news thank you Jonathan well new this morning police are trying to figure out how a man ended up being shot on the city's west side it happened just after 11 last night police say two men were driving around the west side when they heard gunshots officers tell us one bullet went through the passenger window and hit one of the men in the face. The driver then sped off towards downtown. Police say an officer pulled them over and noticed the passenger was injured. That man was taken to Bamsey, but he's expected to be okay. Police are now trying to figure out what happened. Breaking news out of Houston this morning. A deputy with Harris County Constable Precinct 4 dead and two others injured. The investigators say the suspect ambushed the three as they were responding to a disturbance outside a Houston bar. This is what we know right now. Deputies say this all happened around 2.30 this morning. The three deputies were working an extra shift at the 45 North Bar. That's when they heard a disturbance. Deputies say they thought it was a robbery. They tried to take a suspect into custody. That's when investigators say the deputies were ambushed by a man with a rifle. So far, we are told one person of interest is in custody. No word yet on the condition of the two other injured deputies. This investigation is still ongoing. We do expect updates throughout the day, so make sure to stay with us on air and online. Back here at home, three kids recovering this morning after being hit by a vehicle, all three walking to school on the city's south side. This is what we know right now. It happened yesterday on Somerset Road near Fair Meadow Street and I-35. San Antonio police say the kids were walking on the street because the sidewalk not ideal to walk on and that it was poorly lit. SAPD tells us that the driver thought he had hit a dog. He realized it was the three children. He called 911 immediately. He stopped to help all three taken to University Hospital. Their ages 13, 8 and 5 years old. Fred Bonewell, the chief operating officer for CPS Energy, is resigning. This comes just days after a defender's investigation revealed that Bonewell made an ethically insensitive comment in front of four fellow employees back in 2018. He also had been turned in multiple times for possible misuse of his corporate purchasing card. Bonewell was placed on administrative leave Monday and announced his resignation yesterday. One day after giving the green light for Moderna booster shot, a FDA panel has made a similar recommendation for those who receive the one dose Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. That's right, ABC's Christine Sloan has the details. Millions of Americans who received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine are now one step closer to a second shot. An FDA advisory panel voting unanimously to recommend booster shots for anyone 18 and older at least two months after getting the single shot vaccine. We have millions of recipients that have been waiting for answers and 
generally they've been left in the dark. And finally, now they have a path to getting that additional protection. Data from Johnson & Johnson show a booster two months after the first shot increases protection to 94 percent against symptomatic disease and up to 100 percent against severe disease. The booster developments come as millions of Americans make plans to gather for the holiday season. The CDC updating its guidance, saying, quote, the best way to minimize COVID risk and ensure that people people can safely gather is to get vaccinated or get the booster if you're eligible. Meantime, vaccine requirements continue to go into effect in cities across the country. In San Francisco, police officers who haven't provided proof of vaccination yet now face termination after an overnight deadline passed. It's going to affect uh, every district station in the city. And in Chicago, the city and police unions filing lawsuits against each other over a similar requirement for the city's officers. Chicago officials saying despite the requirement, no officers will be barred from working, at least right now. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Time now is 637, 58 degrees out. Still ahead, we're talking high school football. We are talking the best and the brightest under the Friday night lights. Are you putting in too many steps Whoa, each day? Too many? This is a Max Massey story. After the <laughs> break, how much you should really be walking? This is a Max Massey story. Sarah Costa out stepping me every day. Well, Max, you get like 500 steps a day. <laughs> we got to we got to increase that. I have longer legs. Well, great day for walking outside. 58 degrees, 637. This at 638 this morning, Sarah Spivey will have our fall forecast. And come back. So if you're obsessed like me on your app, you see how many steps you're getting a day. So when it comes to tracking, how many did you get today? Well, I haven't been up long <laughs> enough. I don't even want to look right now. But when it comes to tracking your fitness max, you <laughs> might have heard that 10,000 steps. It's the golden number that everyone wants to reach. That's a lot. It's a lot. So here's the question, and we don't want to, you know, deter anyone from walking too much. But what do you really need? You know, what's ideal for heart health, or what's ideal for losing weight? We explain. 3,000, 8,000, 15,000 steps. How much do you do a day? Oh, that's easy, 20,000. About 8,000? Yeah, so. five to 7,000. Most fitness trackers recommend a goal of 10,000 steps a day or about five miles, but it turns out there's not a lot of scientific support behind this number. A 2019 Harvard study found regular walking did improve mortality rates in older women, but the reduction in risk appeared to max out at about 7,500 steps a day. A 2020 NIH study of almost 5,000 men and women found that those who walked 8,000 steps a day were half as likely to die early than those who walked 4,000 steps a day. But the statistical benefits of walking more steps than that were not significant. Okay. So we're checking our steps. Max, uh, just on Thursday, I got about 1,700. Well, this was, hold on, let me read the rest of the script. So most adults in the United States and Canada average fewer than 5,000 steps a day. So it is important. We want people to have good physical fitness that you move each and every day. Absolutely important. So walking regularly has been yes, shown so. to promote weight loss, reduce your risk of Ooh. disease, and improve energy. Okay, yesterday, got it. Are you, are you like cheating on my exam over here? 6,247 okay, steps. Okay, that's pretty good because okay. the other usually. What did you have? Okay, uh, yesterday wasn't a good day. <laughs> also, you have to have your phone on you. Yeah, that is a problem. Yeah, so if you walk without your phone, unless you have a clip. A, mm, I'm not going to be that person. You're not going to do that. Sarah, no. What about you? I know you like to do walks I don't around know your neighborhood. I'm my steps. <laughs> oh, yeah. She just walked me through it. It's a process. It's, it's an app built into your But iPhone. I do like to walk a lot. Yeah. And it's a beautiful Especially day to do today. that. Today, you could add to the Pearl, maybe. Ooh, look at that. Go for a walk around the Pearl. Yeah, it's going to be a nice day for that. It's currently 58 degrees outside, but we'll be seeing temperatures only warm up into the 60s this morning. And then in the afternoon, really only getting up to about 72 degrees. It's going to be windy. North winds at 10 to 20 gusts up to 25 miles per hour and tonight it'll get chilly temperatures will dip down into the 50s for uh, the evening hours there if you have a Saturday
Saturday night date night. Uh, just make sure to bring that jacket with you because it's going to be chilly this evening. 59 degrees outside right now. Winds are from the north. Dew points are low. It feels amazing outside. Have your cup of coffee on the porch as soon as that sun rises here in just a bit. Winds are from the north at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. But again, today we could see them up to 20 miles per hour with gusts up to 25 miles per hour. Temperatures are generally in the 50s. It's 52 in Kerrville, though, and 50 in Rock Springs. Still in the 60s in Del Rio, but again, give it a couple more uh, minutes and we'll probably see that temperature drop a little bit more. 64 in Pleasanton and 58 in New Braunfels. Take a wider look here at these temperatures. It's 36 degrees in the panhandle of Texas. Amarillo clocking in at 36, Lubbock at 38. And there's that front. You can see that it's still 73 in Brownsville, so that front is really yet to move through the Rio Grande Valley. I was telling this to Sarah earlier, it's 59 here in San Antonio. In New York, it's 67 this morning, so we're cooler than uh, the Big Apple today. And we've got some uh, drier air moving in from the north. Uh, you can see why we're experiencing this cooler weather and drier weather. That dry, cold air mass continuing to funnel in with dew points in the 40s. And a high pressure system is going to settle over today. So although it's breezy right now, we will be seeing those winds calm down, especially by sunset tonight. Let me take you through the high res future cast. We are going to see some cirrus clouds moving in from some Pacific moisture out in the Pacific Ocean. So we'll have a bit of a milky hue to the sky, a high temperature, as I just mentioned, of 72 degrees. And then as those winds calm, even though we're still going to have some of those high thin cirrus clouds out there tonight, I do think that many folks will be able to dip briefly into the 40s tomorrow morning, 49 for that morning low, even cooler up in the hill country, closer to 40 degrees for Kerrville uh, in those areas. But we're not anticipating a freeze, so you don't have to worry about that. And then tomorrow, another day where we'll have a little bit more cloud cover, 73 for the high. Coldest morning is going to be tomorrow morning. We'll still be chilly on Monday, and then by Tuesday morning, our temperatures will get back into the 60s in the morning hours. And that's because the humidity will rise a bit by Tuesday. We'll be seeing dew points back into the 60s. But here's the good news. We don't anticipate any really hot or toasty weather. In fact, highs will only be in the mid 80s by the middle of the week. And then we get another front by Friday, and that'll drop our highs back down into the 70s, bringing us a chance for some isolated rain. Max and Sarah. This is it. What? This is where you thrive. I, oh yeah. High 40s, 50s, you're good to go. I, I love it. I'm, I'm here for it. Time now at 646, 58 degrees out. Woo, go Astros. We know you're a big Astros fan. Big win last night over the Red Sox. Plus, we're in San Antonio. We got big high school football to talk about. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. Big game in our big game coverage. Titans of Southwest Legacy taking on the Dragons of Southwest, or as they like to call it, the Fire and Armor Bowl, the fourth. Take a look, Titans up 3-0. Second quarter extending that. Titans on the Dragons, six-yard line. Big Z, big throw. Backhand corner of the end zone. Javier Mario, big touchdown from the fireworks. Gotta love it. 10-0 Titans at halftime. Ooh, Dragons right back at it. Running back Jake Freisenheim taking the pitch, forcing his way into the end zone, crossing the plane, five-yard touchdown. Titans on the goal line now, big number 71. Isaiah Urabati in the backfield, love the fullback. We gotta respect the fullback a little bit more. Pushing the pile for the score, 16-10 legacy. All right, great game last night. Rutledge Stadium, Judson taking on East Central, 27-6A. Rockets up 28, 24, 10 seconds left, fourth and 10. Caden Basanko heaving it to the end zone. Jack Stewart hauling in. That is a game winning 43 yard touchdown. Let them know. Hornets, Hail Mary has been answered. East Central 30, Judson 28. All right, go Spurs, go. It is never too early to talk basketball. Last game of the Spurs preseason, boy, it was a show. You're not supposed to take a lot away from wins or losses of the preseason. I am so in on the Spurs team. We had big threes. Look at that, Doug McDermott, new addition. He was four of nine from three. Weakness of the silver and black last year was the three, so he's adding a little more firepower. DeJounte and Derek White filling up the box score. Yeah, they both had 20, but it was the hustle plays, the passing, and the efficiency. Not to mention, great minutes from Devin Bissell off the bench. Look at this. I mean, everything working. We had a little Josh Primo action last night. Only played seven minutes, but you love to see it. And of course, my guy Lonnie Walker, 126, 98. Next up, regular season tip-off magic this Wednesday. And of course, 
Sarah Costa reminded me we are in the midst of October. That means playoff baseball. The Astros are feeling it. Feeling out of this world, get it? Because they're the Astros. Houston hosting the Red Sox. Here's some highlights. Quick hit in the first. They did go down 3-1. Never lost confidence. Long game, long season. Jose Altuve taking over in the sixth inning. And the Strohs win a close one, 5-4. Don't worry. If you missed it, we got game two of the AFCS today, 3.20 p.m. And, of course, before that game, we got a lot more to talk about. We got Texas taking on Oklahoma State. Texas coming off that tough loss last week. And, of course, the hometown team, UTSA, hosting Rice, looking to stay undefeated. I'm excited. We got a lot of sports to talk about today. Very cool. Very cool. I like the appreciation. <laughs> but you know what I also appreciate? What? Mullets. A kid mullets. wins a <laughs> national hair competition. An amazing mullet. Look at that. That is an amazing mullet. Oh, yeah, wow. Rock it? I oh, like glorious. it. Glorious. Please don't ever rock that. All right. <laughs> well, then with his winnings, he showed just how generous he can be. CNN's Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. What this Arkansas boy did after winning a national best mullet competition proves he doesn't just have a spectacular head of hair, but a heart of gold to match. 11-year-old Alan Baltz has been growing his prodigious plumage since the beginning of the pandemic. So when he found out there was a cash prize, he decided to enter the USA Mullet Championship. But it's not what you think. After winning the kids' division, Alan was less party in the back and more business in the front. He decided to donate all $2,500 of his winnings to local foster care organizations. Well, I know how it feels to be in foster care, so I just thought maybe it would be sweet to do it. And just like his impressive hair, his community is behind him. Alan's generosity has inspired more than $3,000 in donations to two separate foster care organizations. So what's next for Alan? A haircut, maybe? Nobody's going to touch that. Speaking of hair-raising stories, after spotting a snake going under their house, a California homeowner called in a local expert for help. But what he found under there was shocking. Total of 92 rattlesnakes underneath her house. You heard that right. He removed 92 rattlesnakes. The handler says this veritable viper pit was likely caused by drought conditions. And not only was he not rattled by the find, he was downright giddy. I was tickled pink. I wish that happened every day to me. Give me a 300. I mean, as long as I got enough containers to put them in and come back enough, I'll do it all day long. Ugh. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. You know, we each have a different grading scale of what a win is. For him, 300 rattlesnakes would be a win. Absolutely not. That hair, though. Oh, phenomenal. Like, uh, big I, hair, bigger heart. I love that he was like, nobody's touching my hair. <laughs> Time now, 655, 58 degrees out. Now let's take a look at what's coming up next in Good Morning America. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, an FDA advisory panel voting unanimously to endorse a Johnson & Johnson booster shot. What that means for the 15 million Americans who received the single dose vaccine and the debate over mixing and matching boosters. A member of that FDA panel joins us this morning. Plus supply chain disruptions leading to empty shelves and rising prices. Now a trucker shortage threatening to worsen the gridlock ahead of the holidays and Bill Clinton hospitalized the former president recovering from an infection, what we're learning about his condition. It's all ahead here on GMA. It was closing time at a bar on the city's east side, but the night wasn't over. Good morning. I'm Jonathan Cotto. A shooting has landed two women in the hospital this morning. Officers responded shortly after closing. They say the shooting started with a fight inside the bar, but it actually happened in the parking lot. One woman was shot in the hand while the other woman was shot in the back of the neck. The second woman drove herself a couple blocks away before she was ultimately able to call for help. Now, police don't have a description on the suspect. The woman that was shot in the hand is expected to be okay, while the woman that was shot in the back of the neck is in critical condition. This case remains under investigation. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. It's 57 cool degrees out there at the airport. 51, though, up in Comfort and Kerrville, so even chillier up in the hill country. Now, today we're going to be looking at a high temperature only in the low 70s. In fact, we'll spend most of the day in the 60s today. It'll be breezy with winds from the north at 10 to 20, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. But those winds will calm this evening. And then by tomorrow morning, many of us will be waking up in the 
40s and near 50 degrees. Ooh. It's going to be a chilly start to the day tomorrow. Another beautiful day with highs in the 70s. Finally feeling like fall out there. And we'll really only rebound into the 80s before another front arrives on Friday. Thank you, Sarah. 40s. Yeah, very excited about this. Hey, don't forget, 8 o'clock show. We have a lot of cool things coming up. That's right. We'll see you back here at AM. Live from KSA 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's 8 o'clock this Saturday, October 16th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. All smiles here because it Absolutely. is cool. Well, you want to do your fall feeling dance? Fall feeling. I'm Love just it. really excited. I walked yeah. outside and like really needed a fleece. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes I just grab a fleece, even if it's 80 degrees because I'm dramatic like that. But Sarah Spivey, <laughs> Fall is really here this morning. Can, can confirm, Sarah Costa is dramatic. Like <laughs> uh, but yeah, it feels like fall, and it's going to be one of those weekends where it's going to feel like fall all weekend long. We're not going to have to worry about a toasty afternoon after a cold morning. Uh, in fact, it's going to only get up into the 70s today, and the low 70s at that. Let's take a look outside. Right now it is 57 degrees out there, mostly sunny skies, as you can tell. Winds are from the north at about 10 miles per hour. Elsewhere, we've We've got chilly temperatures in Comfort. It's 49 degrees, 52 at Bernie Stage Airfield. So the higher elevations, a few degrees cooler. That does make sense. And looking at today's forecast, this weekend looks great. 72 for the high today. That's it. And then we'll start tomorrow morning with likely our coldest morning yet this season. 49 degrees tomorrow morning. A chilly start, but a pleasant afternoon. 73 for your Sunday's forecast. All right, coming up, we're going to talk about how we are expecting uh, eventually an increase in humidity that could lead to a chance for rain as well. So we've got a lot to unpack in the forecast coming up in a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. We begin the, with news out of Houston this morning. We now know a deputy shot and killed in what authorities are calling an ambush at a nightclub. We also know that two other deputies also injured in the shooting. We're told the deputies were working an extra job at a nightclub in North Houston when they got a call for a robbery. The deputies were struggling with one person when someone else started shooting. One deputy was shot in the back, the other in the foot. A third deputy who was shot died at the hospital. Houston police are currently searching for the person responsible for this shooting. And back here at home, San Antonio police investigating a shooting at an east side bar that left two women in the hospital. So take a look. This was a scene around two this morning. This is the Vibe Sports Bar and Grill on Rigsby Avenue. Police tell us it all started with a fight inside the bar and then escalated to shooting in the parking lot. One woman shot in the hand, the other shot in the back of the neck. A second woman managed to drive a couple miles away to Bernadine Drive. That's where she called 911. Both women being treated at the hospital. So far, no arrests have been made. Another shooting overnight, this one on the city's west side. Police say just after 11 last night, two men were driving around the South Laredo and South Zarzamora area when they heard shots fired. One of the bullets went through the passenger's window and hit one of the men in the face. The driver took off and police pulled them over near North Santa Rosa and West Martin. And that's when the officer noticed a passenger was shot. The man was taken to the hospital for treatment and is expected to be okay. Police questioned the driver about the shooting, but the driver couldn't give them any information about who actually shot at them. And another top story we were following this morning, a second sentencing in the death of baby King J. Davila, a woman sentenced to eight years in prison for her role in what police say covering up the baby's death. Angie Torres pleading guilty to tampering with evidence sentenced yesterday. At first, officials had believed that baby King J. was kidnapped it was just eight months old. This all happened back in 2019, but they have since learned that Angie Torres helping stage the kidnapping along with the baby's parents, Christopher Davila and Beatrice Sampaio. Now, Davila, the father, sentenced to 40 years in prison earlier this year. As for the baby's mother, that trial is set for next month. And the chief operating officer for CPS Energy resigning. And this news comes just days after a defender's investigation. Our defender's investigation revealed that Fred Bonewell made an ethnically insensitive comment in front of four employees back in 2018. He was also turned in multiple times for possible misuse of his corporate purchasing card. Bonewell was placed on administrative leave on Monday, announcing his resignation just yesterday. And happening this morning, a small group of dedicated volunteers making a huge impact in the lives of local children. So those children are working, those volunteers are working on a special project, all for the children in Child Protective Services. 
Our Jonathan Gothel joins us live with all the details. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah. You know, it's really nice and chilly outside, so it's really starting to feel like Thanksgiving. I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself, but we're all nice and cozied up here this yes, morning. And I'm with Sharon Tremonte. You are the vice president of Altrusa. Sharon, what's taking place here this morning? Well, our, our local club, Altrusa of San Antonio, is has gotten together for a Make a Difference Day. And what we are doing is we are putting Activity Kids kits together for the children that go through the rainbow room for child protective services as they get brought in and and go through the intake process there's a lot of trauma and a lot of stress that's associated with that and research has told us that if you give the kids something constructive to do something to busy their mind they cope much better with the stress so we're putting together activity bags for them now, talk to us a little bit about Altruce. I understand this is an organization, a small organization that's been around since 1929. Yes, we've been in San Antonio since 1929. We entered the state. It's an international organization for community service. The unique thing about us is that each individual club takes their community needs. They assess their community needs, develop their own service projects, their own fundraisers, so that they can target specifically what our community needs. Now, talk to me a little bit about the impact that you're having in the lives of these children here. You know, they're being, you said it's a traumatic experience, being pulled from their homes. They go through this process, and this is just a little bit of a, a, a way to provide comfort for them. What's, how's that been for you? Oh, we love doing this. We started this last year, and we were able to do 60 kits. Luckily, with a, a grant that we received from Altrusa International, we've been able to do four times this year. We've added more things to the bag, and we actually have hand-sewn uh, cloth bags for them to put their belongings in, so they don't have to worry about trying to find something to put their clothes in as they move through the system. Sharon, great work. Thank you so much. I'm going to continue to hang out here with the folks of Altrusa. We have a lot of work ahead. 300 bags for these kids. Max, Sarah? Doing good out there. Thank you, Jonathan. 806, 57 degrees out. Well, if you still need to get a flu shot, we have all their information you'll want to know coming up in our show later on. All right, and after you get the flu shot. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. Building the Ofrenda. Brought to you by Toyota. Ofrenda means offering. And on November 1st, these altars welcome back our loved ones to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each of them has a specific purpose. The sweet smell of incense is a great way to guide a soul back to the world of the living. It's also believed the smoke will elevate your prayers to God, purify your loved one's soul, and ward off evil spirits. An ideal location is on the bottom level beside other elements of purification. If you can find it, use copal incense. Made from a tree sap, its sacred scent can be traced all the way back to the ceremonies of the Mayans. Tell your loved one how much you miss them by lighting some incense. And hopefully your abuelita won't judge you this time. Talk to me about this item. It's a churro split. You get two churros with it, and you pick three flavors of ice cream, and you pick your toppings, and yeah. That's the one, then. Yeah. Break off some of the churro as well. Now, this is a fun idea. So there you go. That's a buy that you can get when you come out here. Mm. Yeah, so it's oh, like a wow. banana split with the extra churro, and it tastes amazing. The churro split comes out with three different kinds of ice cream that you can put in the inside, and you get to pick whatever ones you want. And there's a lot of flavors out here that they're making from scratch in the back. You get it loaded up with topping on there, cherry on top as well, a little bit of syrup, and some cajeta is actually inside of the churros themselves. I mean, delicious stuff, great bites, and super sweet if that's what you're looking for. That's insane. Yes. That's like over the top. Because churros already by themselves are already so sweet. Mm -hmm. You add the ice cream on there, that's a next level treat. Concha ice cream sandwich. Yes, that's what, what our drove new. you. <laughs> what drove you to make this crazy it's item? It's just the holidays. So here's the thing. Yeah. If this were like two weeks ago, that'd be perfect. But now, 57 degrees no, out. No, you can't. You, this is like soup Ooh, weather. Like this, I want like. This is some, soup weather. I want some coffee. I want some soup. I'll give you pumpkin like pumpkin soup. spice. Your squash soup. Oh. Wow. Mm. I made beef bourguignon. Very yes. fancy. Oh, you know that is. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's basically a French beef stew. Oh, okay. That took her eight hours to make with red wine in it. Oh. That's super fancy. I like that you threw in the red wine. Well, because she, she told me about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's what it is. 
<laughs> it had some red wines mm. too. Okay. All right. Well, we have had a lot of rain over the last week or so. You know, too much of a good thing in some places. But I wanted to put this in perspective for you. Since the first of October, we've seen more than five and a half inches of rain for the month. That is more than two and a half inches above what is normal, what is average by this time of the month. And then let's go ahead and compare this for the year. So far, since the first of January, we've seen more than 30 inches of rain, which is more than five inches above the average. This time last year, we had only seen more than 18 inches of rain. So we've seen more than a foot of rain than we did this time last year. Very impressive, a healthy rainfall for us. We're still under stage one water restrictions uh, because the aquifer has yet to rise above that threshold, but we'll keep an eye on things. 57 degrees outside right now. It is nice and cool this morning, all because of yesterday's cold front. North winds at 10 miles per hour still from that front. Again, we're going to have winds from the north all day long. It's 52 at Bernie Sage Airfield, 49 in comfort. 56 in Rio Medina, 57 at JBSA Randolph, 55 in New Braunfels. And a wider view here, you can see that there are still some areas in the 40s in the higher elevations up in the hill country like Rock Springs. Winds, as I mentioned, from the north at 10, they could be up to 20 miles per hour with gusts of up to 25 miles per hour today, bringing in some much drier air. Dew points in the 40s outside right now. This time yesterday we had fog, we had high humidity, and those dew points have just tumbled because of that front and that colder air mass moving in. Now throughout the day today, there are going to be some areas of cirrus clouds out there, uh, but it, we're still gonna be able to warm up into the low 70s, but that's it, low 70s for the high. Mm -hmm much cooler than seasonably average. 73 in New Braunfels for the high, 78 in Del Rio, 78 in Laredo, and 75 in Carrizo Springs. So here's how your day stacks up. 60 at 10, 67 at noon. We're still going to be in the 60s for most of the day today. 72 for that afternoon high. As I mentioned, winds will be breezy north 10 to 20, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. But when the sun sets at 702, we're actually going to see those winds calm. And because of that, temperatures are going to fall. We'll be looking at temperatures in the 50s by 10. And by the start of the day tomorrow, likely going to see our coolest morning of the season so far, with temperatures dipping close to 50, even into the 40s, 49 for the morning low in San Antonio, 43 in Hondo, 41 in Kerrville. And then we'll be able to warm up nicely back into the 70s. Now, because we had so much rain earlier this week, a lot of that rain still has to drain into the Gulf of Mexico, so some of the rivers are still swollen. You can see that the San Antonio River near Rungi is in a moderate flood stage right now. We've got flood warnings out at Sandy's Creek at Westhoff for major flooding, and the Guadalupe River near Cuero is under moderate flood stage right now as well. We'll continue to see those rivers dump back out into the Gulf of Mexico, so if you are southeast of San Antonio, make sure to pay attention to the surrounding creek and rivers uh, and tomorrow as I mentioned cold start but a comfortable afternoon in the 70s another comfortable afternoon on Monday we'll get back up into the 80s but that's really not all that bad and then another front is going to arrive Thursday into Friday setting us back down into the 70s how about that fall forecast Max and Sarah how about that <laughs> I'm here for it. Thank Apparently, you. Apparently, 816, 57 degrees. 57 degrees. Yes. Love yes. it. All right, coming up next, he may still be a young boy, but he already has a big heart. Oh. How five-year-old Emmett is helping others with his family's pumpkin crop. All right, did you play the lotto? I didn't. You know, it's really not high enough. Uh, what, okay, <laughs> what does the number have to be? It has to be like in the hundreds million. Okay, so you can't just win 90 million. I mean, I can't. That's just chump change. I'll take it. Costa. I'll take it. All right, let's take a look at your lot of numbers. Pick three, seven, eight, zero, fireball four, daily four, zero, zero, three, three, fireball four. Catch five, 10, 16, 25, 30, 35. Mega millions, three, 20, 31, 34, 65, mega ball 18, mega plier three. A big one, too small, <laughs> they match, don't they? Oh my gosh, so precious. So what started out as a way to teach a young boy about the value of a dollar turned into a more charitable lesson for all. Five-year-old Emmett from central Minnesota began selling pumpkins from his family's farm last year when his mother asked him 
what he wanted to do with the $400 he wow. earned. Emmett said he wanted to donate all of it. That's amazing. That's exactly what he ended up doing, going on a shopping spree for toys for tots. This year's crop was as plentiful, but Emmett still raised $100, plans to donate all to his church for a new playground. Emmett says he and his little brother plan to sell pumpkins for at least, wait for it, the next 60 years. Well, here at home, if you need to get your flu shot, today is the day to do it. Today is the last day to receive a free flu shot provided by University Health and Bear County. Shots will be administered at the Nelson Wolf Stadium until noon today. You do need to register online beforehand at universityhealthsystem.com slash flu. All right, time now, 821, 57 degrees out. Let's take a look at some birthdays. All right, this is Azel. One year old. Happy Aww. birthday, Azel. So cute. Love the hat. Yeah. All right. And next up, Gianna, three years old. Happy birthday. We got cute pictures today. Yeah, it's so cute. Happy birthday. Remember to keep posting your birthday pictures. Ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. We've been all smiles today because it finally feels like fall outside. We are getting closer and closer to Halloween. Favorite holiday? Oh, by far. So it's it best is one. a good time to get out with the family, enjoy so many activities going on in and around our community. All right, so if you head to ksat.com right now, you can find a list of Halloween events happening now through the end of the month. We also have maps showing just some of the nearby mm. pumpkin patches and corn mazes you can visit. There's also some great info about Day of the Dead events coming up. We saw last weekend, was it last week or two weekends ago, Jonathan Cotto out at Trader's Village. Oh, yeah. He had the, uh, the apple gun. The apple, like, cannon. cannon. Yeah, I was very jealous. That's how I did That's it. great sound effect. Yeah. I was jealous. No, it's awesome out there. I love, I love Halloween in this time of year. And today, perfect day to get out there. Time now, 825, 57 degrees out. We'll still head on GMSA as the holiday season approaches. Health officials are once again addressing the question many people have to mask up or not while spending time with loved ones. Plus, the supply chain crisis. We talk about it each and every day, and it seems like it is only getting worse each and every day. The effort's now being made so things can get moving this holiday season. 300 activity bags are being made right now for children going through Child Protective Services, all in an effort of providing comfort details. Coming up next. Good morning, welcome back, and a happy weekend. It is 829 this Saturday, October 16th, middle of October, and it finally feels like it. I know, and I really enjoyed the rain we got over the last couple mm -hmm. of days. Um, my rain gauge, Sarah Spivey, I love checking it in the morning. It was almost five inches. That's a big deal. That is a big deal. That is a big deal. And some areas had even seen up to eight inches of rainfall from Wednesday night into Thursday uh, morning storms. Now, some of the water is still draining into the Gulf of Mexico, so obviously watch for swollen creeks and rivers, especially southeast of San Antonio. But it feels like fall outside from yesterday's cold front. Here's a look at the temperatures out there right now. 57 degrees at San Antonio International Airport, 51 in Kerrville, 50 in Rock Springs, 51 in Hondo. You know, the biggest thing, too, in addition to the colder temperatures is you notice how much less humid it is outside. Dew points have gone down by 25 to even 30 degrees in spots. This time yesterday, we were dealing with fog outside right now. Just beautiful sunrises out there as we're enjoying the first light of the day here. Well, today we'll be at 60 at 10, 67 at noon, 72 for the afternoon high, so not even getting all that warm. North winds today at 10 to 20, gusting up to 25 miles per hour, and it'll be chilly this evening in the 50s. So what's up with the weather? Everybody's been asking me, how long is it going to feel like fall? Well, we're going to have a chilly morning tomorrow morning in some areas in the 40s, and we'll actually see these cool temperatures last until the middle of this upcoming week. And even then, it's not going to get all that warm outside. So coming up, we'll have a look at the forecast in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. A man in custody this morning after officers say he led them on a brief chase and caused a rollover crash. So take a look. This is 42 year old Brian Scott Palmer. According to the arrest affidavit, officers received a call for a possible family violence situation last Saturday. This all happening at a mobile home park on South Stars Moor near I-35. Now, when officers arrived, police say they recognized Palmer from previous incidents. They tried to pull him over. That's when Palmer allegedly sped off. He crashed into another vehicle, causing that to roll over. Police say he didn't stop, didn't try to help out. Palmer now in Bear County Jail on a $15,000 bond.
Well, now to the latest involving the coronavirus here in San Antonio. The temporary COVID-19 memorial is in the beginning stages of being removed. Volunteers at the site located at the corner of Market and South Alamo streets began taking down the hearts display on the fence yesterday. The Deep in Our Hearts Memorial has been up since May 27th. More than 3,400 red hearts were attached to the fence, symbolizing those who died of COVID-19 here in San Antonio. It's given uh, people in our city and visitors as well an opportunity, I think, to um, take a moment and to take pause for how this has impacted us. The hearts with photos not collected by family members, they will be archived in several museums throughout San Antonio. And speaking of COVID, a lot of questions with the holidays around the corner and the CDC says masks are a must this holiday season. Although COVID hospitalizations have been down over the last month, public health experts warn the United States that we could see another spike in cases this winter, particularly around the holidays. The CDC's number one advice to get the vaccine before gatherings or before you travel. The CDC also stressing people should still wear masks indoors, especially if you're around someone who is unvaccinated. The White House says fully vaccinated foreign visitors can start traveling to the U.S. on November 8th. The new guidelines apply to America's air, land and sea borders. A White House official says more details are coming soon about, quote, very limited exceptions, end quote, as well as which COVID-19 vaccines will be accepted. It will likely include vaccines approved for, for use in the U.S. and those with an emergency use listing from the World Health Organization. Some we've been following very closely. The spending bill in your morning headlines. President Joe Biden says he prefers to slash the length of the new and expanded programs in the $3.5 trillion bill. Now, the president says he would rather cut spending rather than eliminate programs entirely. Democrats are working to bring the package down to about $2 trillion, which would be paid for with higher taxes on corporations and the wealthy. Now, the proposal includes free child care and community college to significant provisions meant to combat climate change. Now to the supply chain crisis, seemingly getting worse and worse each and every day. The ports are clogged, ships are filling up, and goods and supplies, they are taking forever to get anywhere. Transportation issues on shore, they are grinding deliveries to a full stop. ABC's Philip Lipoff is in New Jersey with the efforts to get things moving again before the holidays. This morning, supply chain bottlenecks are affecting the world's economic recovery and are expected to get worse in the coming days and months. Ships are backlogged and now a looming trucker shortage. The American Trucking Association estimates prior to the pandemic, the industry was short 60,000 drivers. That number only increased with retirements and not being able to train new drivers because trucking schools have closed. 19 or 18 months back, everything shut down, people were laid off and nothing was flowing. Getting things from ships onto trucks, trucks onto full freight to half freight, those transition points are where we are seeing gaps. Prices and wait times are up. Small businesses taking a big hit. For the owner of one apparel business, it is a race against the clock for seasonal items. We're seeing delay. I'm seeing delays of two months, month and a half, two months. So that really, really is putting me up against a wall. About 40% of all U.S. imports come through Southern California's ports. But right now, loaded cargo containers stacked on ships are bobbing off the coast of Los Angeles and Long Beach. Big retailers are chartering their own ships to stock shelves for the holidays. The pandemic affecting every link in the supply chain. Already, Americans are paying more for eggs and meat, both costing 12% more than just a year ago. Even if you're not buying or selling anything, you're a consumer, and because of that, you're part of the supply chain and seeing the effect of it. This year has seen record-breaking price jumps for children's shoes, up nearly 12%. Furniture up more than 11%. Even going out to dinner will cost you an unprecedented 5.2% more than last year. We got to catch up. President Biden trying to ease the burden by asking companies to work together and ports to work around the clock, trying to fix the backlog and pause inflation, already up five and a half percent. That's Phil Lipoff reporting happening today here at home, an organization that's been around since 1929, and they were founded with one objective in mind, 
service to others. This morning, that organization is busy at work prepping activity bags for children going through the Child Protective Services system. Our Jonathan Goto joins us live. Good morning, Jonathan. Looks like y'all have a lot going out there. So what's actually going into these bags? We definitely have a lot going on here. And let me just tell you, Max and Sarah, I have officially adopted the ladies of Altrusa as my, <laughs> as my aunts. You guys are officially my tias, my aunts. It's been nothing but love. And let me tell you, these handmade activity bags are being made with that. Nothing but love here. Now, Sharon, what is going into these bags? Well, the idea is to give the children that have to go through CPS some fun activities to help them cope with the stress of having to go into the system. So to start off with, what child doesn't love? A plush toy. And then we have some activity books, some coloring books, and other activities. Uh, we have a set of, uh, we have a toy in this particular bag. It's a set of dominoes. Um, literacy is very important to Altrusa. Um, but literacy isn't just about reading books because they get their own set of books. They also get some math flashcards so that can help them with their math literacy as well. And then we also, what kid doesn't love stickers? So, I love stickers. I love stickers. <laughs> I love stickers. And so they have all different kinds of activities that can help them pass the time while they're waiting to be interviewed or waiting to go into the system. Now, Sharon, can you explain a little bit to me that, you know, a child is separated from their home. They come to Child Protective Services. What exactly is the, the Rainbow Room? The Rainbow Room serves as a resource center for the caseworkers of CPS. And it has everything from our activity bags. They have changes of clothes. They have car seats in case it's an infant and they need to safely transport the child. Um, they have diapers. They have just about anything that a caseworker might need in order to help that child transition to a more permanent solution, whether it's temporary or permanent, foster, or just going into a shelter. Well, thank you so much, Sharon. Well, Max, Sarah, we have about 800 bags more to fill, ladies. <laughs> and we have a lot of work here. So we're going to continue stuffing these wonderful handmade bags. As you can see, she's putting the string into them here, doing an amazing job, by the way. <laughs> Max, Sarah, back to you. I love he, that they've been adopted. He's yes. been adopted by the ladies. I love it. Great job. Yeah. Great job. Great right. costume. 838, 58 degrees out. Well, a five layer children's face mask that actually is comfortable and breathable. Details on happy masks just ahead. And yeah, this is your story. Take it away. Okay, so we're hearing from an organization dedicated to spreading awareness in the importance of pollinators oh. and how they sustain our ecosystem. Very cool. So we saw the butterflies there. Let's take a live look out of the Alamo City here. 58 degrees, Sarah Spivey giving us something over there. Spreading her wings. Oh, oh beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> we'll be right back. Well, this is the peak week for monarch butterfly migration through the San Antonio area. This is they make their great journey from Canada through the U.S. to Mexico for the winter. That's right. So since 2016, the Texas Butterfly Ranch, it's an organization dedicated to the awareness of the importance of pollinators, how we really sustain our ecosystem. Well, they've hosted a festival as these monarchs pass through San Antonio. That's why I spoke with the founder of the group about the importance monarchs and the progress has been made in sustaining them. Monarchs are considered a um, cornerstone species. Like if, the, if you know the population goes down, then what does that say about everything else? Monica Makel, the founder of the Texas Butterfly Ranch, breaks it all down. Butterflies are not only beautiful pollinating creatures, they are backbone pollinators that are quickly disappearing due to climate change. It's why her organization's mission is to raise awareness of pollinator importance and why they are essential to sustaining our ecosystem. It's kind of like you know a car. You know, one screw falls out of the car, it's no big deal. But when all these little screws start to fall out, you're gonna have a huge car wreck and that's kind of where we're headed right now unless we change things and monarchs are, are indicators of a lot of those things climate change weather patterns uh, you know pesticide use habitat destruction it's why during the migration period when monarchs stop in San Antonio on their journey from Canada to Mexico for the winter the organization takes part in tagging and releasing hundreds of monarchs to track the numbers she says you can think of San Antonio as a hospitality center for the butterflies everything's popping out so it's it's good Good. It's good for the butterflies. They're going to have plenty of nectar to fuel their journey and hopefully fatten up so they can make it through the winter because that's their goal right now is to get really big and fat. Not only to tag and release, the Texas Butterfly Ranch hosts an annual butterfly and pollinator festival to raise awareness about monarch preservation. 
One way you can help, by planting a pollinator garden with native plants that's pesticide free. And since 2018, that awareness has started to pay off. We did a program with 300 for 300, and we tried to get the community to plant 300 pollinator gardens for San Antonio's 300th birthday. And we rocked it. I think we, we got like three or 375 or so butterfly gardens planted. I think we're up to like 700 now. So today they're actually hosting their butterfly and pollinator festival starting at 930 at Confluence Park. They have a parade that anyone can take part in to get there at 930. The parade starts at 945 and then from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They have over 50 educational uh, partners and vendors, even free kayaking. It's a really cool event and Sarah, the weather could not be better for it. It could not. It's going to be a beautiful day and I think I know where Sarah Costa is going to be this afternoon. I want to show you guys some good news when it comes to the Edward aquifer. It is up half a foot over the past 24 hours and the that means that in the 10 day average, the 10 day average is 660 and a half feet. Now we are still under stage one water restrictions. We enter stage one water restrictions when the 10 day average gets below 660. To get out of stage one water restrictions, uh, the powers that be have to say, okay, we're, we're out of stage one water restrictions. But it is good news to see that that 10 day average is coming up over that threshold. So we'll wait and see how much longer we're under these stage one water restrictions. Today is going to be a beautiful day. You may notice how nice it feels outside right now with temperatures in the 50s. We've got plenty of sunshine. We'll have some cirrus clouds today. It is going to be windy with winds from the north at 10 to 20, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. But the temperature today for most of the day will be in the 60s. In the afternoon, we'll top off right near 72 degrees. Sun will set at 702. The winds will calm and our temperatures will fall into the 50s by 10 p.m. Outside right now, it is 57. Winds are from the north at about 10 miles per hour. And that stout wind makes it feel a little cooler than what the thermometer reads out there. North winds at 10 to 15. But again, they could gust up to about 25 miles per hour later on today. We were in the 40s in parts of the hill country, but temperatures have warmed up a little bit. 53 in Kerrville, 50 in Rock Springs, 59 in Del Rio, 63 in Pleasanton, and 62 in Catula. When we take a wider view here, look how cold it is in the Panhandle. Nearly freezing in Amarillo and Lubbock this morning, as well as in Midland. Now, we are not going to be getting that cold by any means, but still, this drier air filtering in from the north is going to keep things really pleasant today, tomorrow, and for for a good portion of next week as well as a high pressure system settles overhead. This is what's going to allow for our winds to calm down too as it moves closer to San Antonio. But for most of the day today, it'll be windy and Pacific moisture is going to be slung our way, giving us cirrus clouds today, but not any kind of moisture at the surface. 72 for the high, as I mentioned earlier. And then tonight, as winds calm, we're still going to have some clouds, but we will be able to drop down to about 49 degrees for the start of the morning tomorrow. It will be chilly. If you have anywhere to go in the morning tomorrow, know that you'll want to bring that jacket, but dress in layers because in the afternoon, we'll be back up into the low 70s. All in all, though, a very fall-like day. Our morning lows will slowly rebound. By Tuesday, they'll be back in the 60s and the reason for that is we are going to have a little bit more noticeable humidity by Tuesday through the middle of the week, but it's still not going to be all that warm. We'll only be looking at highs in the low to mid 80s for the middle portion of the week there and then another front arrives Thursday into Friday, dropping our temperatures back down into the 70s. Very cool. Are you going to the Butterfly Festival? I think so. It's it's just one of my favorite events. Of course. Yeah, 50 education events. Super educational. You learn so much. All right, there you go. 848. 58 degrees out. A woman stands by her husband literally just to add why she felt the need to sit outside the hospital as her husband recovered from COVID-19. Good morning and welcome back. Quick look at some of the positive stories coming out of the pandemic. First up is a New Hampshire woman standing by her man literally for 12 hours each day. Wow. Valerie Dow sat in a lawn chair outside the Concord Hospital where her husband Scott battled COVID-19 FaceTiming him. Aww. Valerie says she knows they can FaceTime anywhere, but she wanted Scott to know she was right there. Nurses say they could feel the connection and made a sign that says, hi Val. Well, <laughs> their collective 
will work, Dr. saying finally sending Scott home this week. Good, I'm glad everything worked out. All right, next up, a five-layer children's face mask. Actually comfortable, and you can breathe while wearing it, so it may sound too good to be true, but that is what a Los Angeles couple is now selling. They're called Happy Masks. That's happy. And they're so popular, the company actually sells out within minutes of restocking. Now, the whole business is a family affair. The fat masks are based off a design developed by the co-owner's father and a scientist in Taiwan. Some cute designs, too. All right, so one parent's creativity has led to the addition of a playground tool that will help kids who are nonverbal. The Malden Early Education Center in Massachusetts installing a board filled with symbols, images, and words for children who know what they want to say, but they just can't speak it. So it was made possible by a mom who researched the board and helped secure funding. She says her eight-year-old uses the same tool and has made great strides. Amazing stuff. All right, time now, 8.53, 58 degrees out. We'll be right back. Huge shouts to Robert Samron who shot that, put it all together. Do you feel relaxed? Do you feel I do. calm? I do feel nice and calm. <clears throat> do you do yoga? No. Yeah, me neither. I don't <laughs> have the patience. Time now, 8.56, 59 degrees out. So are you a Hispanic adult whose parents speak Spanish and you don't? If so, you are not alone. Still ahead, why a local professor says Spanish between generations may have been lost. And give it back to the community in honor of a young girl whose life was taken by gun violence. Details on Soraya's Christmas letters. A shooting at a bar overnight. Two women injured. We have the latest from police. We continue to follow the latest developments on that shooting in Houston. We'll tell you what we have learned so far. And back here at home taking a live look. 59 degrees, a beautiful fall morning to start the weekend. What is the rest of the day? What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Until then, good morning. Just about 9 a.m. this Saturday, October 16th. Thank you so much for starting your day I with love, us. I love, I love October. Love October. Have you been, you've been on pumpkin spice since like June though. Oh yeah. <laughs> I had to like, you know, will Ease it. your way. <laughs> will it in. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And Sarah Spivey, we woke up. It happened. It happened. <laughs> yeah, it did happen in a big way because of yesterday's cold front. We're really enjoying some cooler, more fall like weather. I want to show you outside right now. We're looking at abundant sunshine, but temperatures were down into the 50s. We got down to 57 degrees early this morning, but as you can see, we're slowly starting to warm up, but we're really not going to get all that warm today. It's 60. It's still a little cool, especially for South Central Texas standards. 55 in Kerrville, 63 in Del Rio, 52 in Uvalde, and 60 in Gonzales. When you compare this to this time yesterday, we had fog, we were humid, and we were 15 to 20 degrees warmer to start the day yesterday. You can definitely tell that that cold front has come to San Antonio in South Central Texas. Perhaps you want to get into the fall spirit and go to a local pumpkin patch. It's going to be cool and windy today. Winds will be from the north at about uh, 10 to 20 miles per hour, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. And for most of the day, we'll be in the 60s. We'll get into the 70s this afternoon with a high temperature of 72. But speaking of pumpkin patches, we've actually got a really wonderful article on our website that actually shows you where pumpkin patches are around the city and the nearest pumpkin patch. Go ahead and give that a look on ksat.com. Just Google search ksat pumpkin patch. It'll be the first thing that pops up. Look at that little map with pumpkins on it. Yeah, get into that fall spirit. Coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about how long this nice weather will last. Max and Sarah. 
Thank you, Sarah. Well, new this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a shooting at an east side bar that left two women injured. This happened around 2 o'clock this morning at the Vibe Sports Bar and Grill on Rigsby Avenue. Police say it started with a fight inside the bar and the shooting happened in the parking lot. One woman was shot in the hand. The other woman was shot in the back of the neck. The second woman managed to drive a couple of miles away to Bernadine Drive, where she called for help. Both women were treated at Bamsey. So far, police do not have a description of the person responsible for this shooting. And another situation we're monitoring overnight. Another shooting, this one on the city's west side. Police tell us that just after 11 last night, two men were driving around South Zarzamora and South Laredo. That's when they heard gunshots. One of those bullets actually going through the passenger's window and shooting the man in the face. And that driver took off. Police pulled them over near North Santa Rosa and West Martin. That's when officers noticed the passenger was shot. Now that man taken to the hospital for treatment. He is expected to be OK. Police questioned the driver, but right now no arrests have been made. Also new this morning, Floresville police are asking for your help in finding a man accused of shooting two people outside of a bar. Investigators tell us this happened last weekend at Roper's Dance Hall off of 10th Street in Floresville just before 2 a.m. Police are looking for this man on your screen, 25 year old Johnny Vela the third. They say Vela tried to get into the bar several times, but was denied each time. Someone nearby then noticed Vela pull out a gun and try to stop him and take his gun away. But that person ended up being shot in the shoulder. Vela then got in the car and fired another shot, hitting another person in the wrist. Vela was able to drive off. If you know where he is, Floresville police, you're asked to call Floresville police. That number, that Crime Stopper number on your screen, 888-808-7894. Now to the latest updates on that shooting in Houston. One deputy shot and killed two more wounded in what authorities are calling an ambush at a nightclub. Now there's a lot of details we're still getting in. We know this happened around 2.30 this morning. Now Houston police giving us these details. We're told deputies were working an extra shift at a nightclub in North Houston. That's when they got a call for a robbery. The deputies were trying to take a suspect into custody. That's when police say the deputies were ambushed by a man with a rifle. One deputy shot in the back, currently in surgery. The other one shot in the foot. That third deputy who was shot, we told you about, died at the hospital. Houston police currently searching for the person responsible. At last check, no arrests have been made. In your morning headlines, Hollywood production could stop on Monday if an agreement on working conditions doesn't come between the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers and the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees. Now that group represents the behind the scenes production staff. One of the main issues are rest during the day, meals and increase the lowest wage workers. If negotiations fail, the group says a strike will come into effect on Monday when members will form picket lines outside the major studios. Well, the first NASA mission to study Jupiter's asteroids blasting off dark and early this morning. The Lucy spacecraft lifted off from Cape Canaveral Space Force in Florida. Now, Lucy is embarking on a 12 year mission exploring Jupiter's Trojan asteroid swarms. This is the first NASA mission to fly by a total of eight ancient asteroids. NASA says the Trojan asteroids are remnants of our early solar system now trapped in its stable orbits associated with but not close to the giant planet Jupiter. All right, a lot going on this morning. We're checking in with Jonathan Cotto throughout the morning, and he is with an organization that's doing amazing stuff. This morning, volunteers with the organization, they have been up, they have been busy making handmade bags, all in an effort to provide some level of comfort for children going through child protective services. Our Jonathan Cotto has been spending the morning there and has been busy put to work by the volunteers. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Max and Sarah. I am here busy just stuffing these activity bags for the kids that are going through that child, that system, Child Protective Services system. And let me tell you, the ladies here, the folks here with Altrusa have a system. Everything's numbered. It's, it's a process. They've been at it all morning, uh, putting these toys and stuffing these bags and getting them ready to go for the kids. But I'm going to let Sharon do a little bit more explaining. Sharon, I want you to inspect this bag, bag number 899. <laughs> <laughs> 
A lot of work. Control. A lot of work. Quality control. Yeah. Sharon, I understand, you know, this. you guys do so much for the community that sometimes isn't highlighted. Again, what's the satisfaction here? What's, what's the... It's not about the recognition, although we love the recognition because we are constantly looking for new members. Any man or woman or child, we have a sponsor an Astra program, uh, which is a children's group that we sponsor but they run the club. They have their own service as well. It's the service. It's service-minded individuals that are coming together just for the good of, of making a difference. Now, I was just speaking with some of the other volunteers here, and they just absolutely love being able to contribute to the community. Now, no organization ever has an abundance or has too many volunteers. No, we don't. If anyone's <laughs> interested in, in, in being a helping hand and participating with Altrusa, where do they have to go? What do they, what do they need to know? Just look us up on Facebook, Altrusa San Antonio. There and the is. contact information, or you can reach out through Facebook, and we'll get back to you. Thank you we so much. have several volunteers from the community that have come and joined us today. We also have some of our Astra kids coming today to Great. help us with the bags. Yes, we need the help. Yes, we do. <laughs> so if you like community service and want to make a difference, come join us. Thank you so much, Sharon. Thank Folks, you. there you have it. If you're interested in participating, Altrusa San Antonio on Facebook. Max, Sarah? Amazing out there. I love it. It's such a good cause. Thank Jonathan's you. Jonathan's having so much fun. I know. <laughs> Time now, 908. 59 degrees out. Okay, what are those? Dumplings. Uh, dumplings, yum. Wings? Are those chicken wings. Okay. All right, we're getting a preview of today's episode of Texas Eats in just a bit. All right, we know the housing market is a little scary right now, but if you are looking for your first house or, you know, just a new house, we have some advice from the experts. Help to ease the nerves. That's next. 59 degrees. It's beautiful out there this morning at 908. How long will this fall like weather stick around for? Sarah Spivey will let us know when we come back. Well, if you've been looking to buy a house recently, then you probably know the market is pretty scary right now. That's true. We've seen asking prices get accepted for more than 30% of market value. We've seen people say we don't even need an inspection. So the last couple months in People say, especially the realtors, historic levels. It's something that can easily intimidate a lot of first time home buyers. Personally, I'm an apartment dweller. It is what it is. We spoke with a member of the San Antonio Board of Realtors for what you should do. So she says the price spike in homes really took off during the peak of the coronavirus pandemic when people were slowly migrating to working from home. And Popularity, of course, with housing is still, everybody's wanting a home office now. So we see that kind of movement. Uh, we still have quite a few folks that have returned to their offices, but still quite a few work from home. And so that adjusts their needs a little bit. So if you're a first time home buyer, what can you do if you're feeling discouraged? She says, do your homework, know where you want to be and what kind of home you're looking for ahead of time. But also try to get all the financing out of the way sooner rather than later. First time home buyers who get their loan pre-approved in the early stages of the process, well, they'll probably give the seller more confidence to move on the offer. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like me and a bunch of people just sit on Zillow and are like, interesting. Then I look and I'm like, dollar doesn't go as far as it I get to. Zillow alerts. Mm -hmm. I'm ready a homeowner. You have a house. <laughs> but I'm so obsessed with the market right now, just oh, watching the different it's areas. Crazy out yeah. There. My yes. aunt is a realtor, so. Mm. I got an in if I need it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we have had a lot of rain, you know, since Wednesday night. And in fact, I want to just kind of recap things for you. Since the 1st of October, we've seen more than five inches of rain, more than five and a half inches of rain. That is more than two and a half above what is average. And then when you compare that to the year, this is where we really see some very impressive numbers for the year. So far, we've seen more than 30 inches of rainfall. That's more than five inches above the average and compare this to last year. This time last year, we only had a little bit more than 18 inches of rainfall. Not only was that below average, but we've seen more than a foot of additional rain since this time last year. That is impressive. Now, unfortunately, it did result in some flooding issues, and we're still seeing creeks and rivers start to drain. Now, 
the San Antonio River at Floresville has peaked and it's starting to come down. It's starting to come down. Uh, the Guadalupe is starting to come down at Gonzales as well as Sandy's Creek at Westhoff. So these are starting to come down, but there is yet to be a peak at the Guadalupe River at Cuero, and that is a minor flood stage. And finally, the Guadalupe River at Victoria is expected to peak at a major flood stage a little bit later on. So that's why there's still some flood warnings for the Guadalupe and for the San Antonio River just further downstream toward Goliad, toward Cuero and toward Victoria. Outside right now, though, we are enjoying some beautiful fall like weather because of yesterday's cold front. It is mostly sunny and 60 degrees outside. That's after our morning low of 57. It's still 52, though, in Holotus, 55 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 55 in Kerrville, 53 in Los Maples, where the leaves may start changing color. Uh, 63 in Castroville, 65. It's Stinson in a wider view here. You can see that's still in the mid 60s for Catula, low 60s for Kennedy and 64 in Victoria. We are dealing with the wind from the north at about 10 to 15 miles per hour and most of the day will be breezy. This is going to be bringing in that nice dry air. Dew points have fallen significantly. Dew points were in the 70s this time yesterday. Oppressive humidity. Now we're seeing dew points in the low 40s. Very nice outside. We will, however, see some cirrus clouds today and it will not get warm. We're going to only see high temperatures in the low 70s, 72 in San Antonio for the high, 71 in Kerrville, maybe even up in the 60s, staying in the 60s for Rock Springs, 78 in Del Rio and 75 in Eagle Pass. We'll be at 67 at noon, so we're spending most of the day in the 60s today, 72 for that high, as I mentioned, and then after the sun sets, we'll see our winds calm, and that's actually going to allow us to get pretty chilly by the start of the day tomorrow. Tomorrow morning's low looks to be in the upper 40s, near 50 degrees in San Antonio. Antonio 41 in Kerrville 43 for the low in Hondo. So it's probably going to be our coolest morning of the season so far. We'll round out the weekend with another pleasant afternoon in the 70s. Nice on Monday too. Some humidity returns Tuesday through Thursday, but our highs will only be in the 80s. Another front arriving Thursday night into Friday, setting us back down into the 70s. A good looking fall forecast there. I like I it. Say so Sarah mm -hmm. Spivey, thank you so much. So we're almost to Halloween. Do you have your costume picked out yet? I do. What is it? It's a secret. Oh, okay. Just text me a picture of it. It's <laughs> fantastic. 916, 60 degrees out. All right, so a replica of the Bates Hotel from the movie Psycho oh. is renting rooms out to horror fans. Details on where you can find it ahead of Halloween. Plus, well, a local family giving back to the community in honor of a young girl who was killed due to gun violence. After the break, what Sarai's Christmas letters means to them. Good morning and welcome back. A San Antonio grandmother honoring her late granddaughter's favorite holiday by giving back to the community. She's doing so through an organization she created after the six-year-old was gunned down earlier this year. Cynthia Alvarez started Soraya Leanne's Blessings in honor of Soraya Pettis. This week would have been her seventh birthday, but sadly she was killed on Mother's Day by gun violence. Among many other things, Alvarez plans to provide Christmas gifts to five families. They're going to be nominated by the community. The organization will then hand deliver the presents on Christmas Eve. They're going to get an extra special gift for them because, of course, it's the hard times for the parents. And because this is a year that Soraya loved, Christmas was the best thing for her. And she loved to give away, and that's what we're going to continue to do for Soraya, you know? So if you know a family on hard times that would like to, that you would like to nominate to receive the gifts from the organization, you can write a letter saying why the family would be a good selection. And you can send that letter to P.O. Box 769782, San Antonio, Texas. And we're obviously going to have all this information on KSAT.com. The deadline to submit a letter is December 11th. And, you know, such a tragedy for that family, but they are turning it into a good thing for the community helping out at least five families this year. Absolutely. Time now is 921, 60 degrees out. Well, still ahead, a preview of today's spooky episode of Texas Eats. David Elder is taking us on two haunted restaurant tours. Plus, we go inside a dumpling restaurant. Ooh, from the Paul. This Hispanic Heritage Moment is brought to you by Taco Cabana. With that unmistakable sound and a few gritos thrown in. Oh, yeah. 
Mariachi music celebrates the triumphs, struggles, and heartbreak of the Mexican people. While some aren't exactly sure of the origins of mariachi music, it is widely believed it developed from early mestizo folk music in the western regions of Mexico and was known as the music of the country people. The ensemble of musicians that we enjoy today took shape in the 19th century in the state of Jalisco, and during the Mexican Revolution, mariachi music was adopted as a symbol of nationalism. Because of deep Hispanic roots, mariachi music has become a large part of the Hispanic culture in the United States with its very first international mariachi conference in 1979 held right here in San Antonio. Not only in Mexico and the United States, mariachi music is enjoyed at celebrations around the world. The dumpling uh, back in Nepal is like our, uh, I would say, taco for Mexicans, <laughs> yeah. or you know, pizza for Italians. It's same to us. Like we grew up eating this day and night. Like it's our street food. You go to a big restaurants there. I love that we're inside of an actual gas station convenience store. This is a yeah. little kitchen that's back here. Right. This is a big kitchen actually. We've been in some smaller kitchens, so this is actually really cool. That you have all this space. Talk to me about the different items that you have right here in front of us. There are four different kinds of dumplings, right? Yes. On the uh, street or a deep fried, we have chicken. On a steamed uh, or juicy, we have pork. Then we have a chili veggie and a bison jol or a soup. Oh, I love that. So four different kinds. You said these are the juicy. Juicy is my favorite. All right. There, right get some now. love, get some sauce. Give me a cheers. Cheers. There, there we go. The juicy Momo dumplings. Here we go. The juicy dumplings here at Momo's house, absolutely delicious. These ones are the chicken variety. And let me tell you, the flavor on the inside is just stellar. Has lots of salty goodness in there. The seasoning though is the trick. It has a lot of great flavor. So somehow- We're talking we, about sauces. We went from <laughs> dumplings and dim sum to wings. And you say you put what on your wings? Honey mustard sometimes. Okay. It's pretty good, try it. Interesting. 927, 60 degrees out. A lot of hard work taking place here by Altrusa volunteers who are stuffing these handcrafted bags for children in San Antonio. Details of what's taking place here coming up next. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. 9.30 this morning, Saturday, October 16th. We move so fast to get here. We're very fast, but you know what? What? It's nice and cool outside. I don't know what that has to do with us being well, fast. It's like not hot. So yeah. you don't get all sweaty. Mm. I got you, Sarah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. The window's no. open. Don't Great worry connection. about that. Great connection. All the windows are open in here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well. Okay, Max. He's being a little smarty, isn't he? Okay, so you know what? We are looking at pollen count today that is not the best. All right, we've got molds that are high, past 4,000, but actual pollen is low. Ragweed pollen, fall elm pollen, pigweed, and grass, weed, grass all low uh, today. We do have um, a nice cooler forecast for us this weekend. So it's going to feel wonderful all weekend long. It's going to feel a lot like fall thanks to yesterday's cold front that moved on through. Take a look at the satellite picture. You can see that we are dealing with some wispy cirrus clouds around San Antonio, but when we take a wider view, those cirrus clouds a little bit more dense off to the west. So throughout the day today, we're going to see these cirrus clouds increase around San Antonio, but it's going to be cool and beautiful outside. It's currently in the 50s still in Kerrville and Rock Springs. It's 60 degrees in San Antonio, 63 in Del Rio, 62 in Gonzales. What a difference 24 hours makes and a cold front. We got that cold front in yesterday, it brought a little bit of rain, made things windy, and today our high temperature will only be 72 degrees. Tomorrow morning we'll wake up even chillier than we did today with the morning low likely right around 50 degrees even in the upper 40s and it'll be a really pleasant day tomorrow to 73. So this nice fall like weather will last through the weekend but how long will it last into next week? I've got a look ahead coming up in a bit. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, new this morning, a man is behind bars after police say he laundered between 30 and $150,000. This is 29-year-old Cartavius Jones. According to an arrest affidavit, an undercover DEA agent planned to sell Jones a kilo of cocaine for over $26,000 last June. Jones claiming he would be the middleman in the transaction via text message. Police say Jones and several other men met up with the agent at the Red Roof Inn on Ritterman Road and followed each other to a second location 
That's when Jones and the other suspects were pulled over by police waiting nearby. Only the driver was arrested that night, but a warrant was later issued for Jones alleged involvement. He is now in Bear County Jail on a $25,000 bond. Another man in police custody this morning after officers say he led them on a brief chase and he actually caused a rollover crash. So take a look. 42 year old Brian Scott Palmer. According to the arrest affidavit, officers say they received a call for possible family violence last Saturday. All of this happening at a mobile home park on South Zarzamora near I-35. Now when officers arrived, police say they recognized Palmer from previous incidents. They tried to pull him over. Palmer allegedly tried to speed off. He crashed into another vehicle. That other vehicle rolled over. Police say Palmer did not stop and render aid, didn't try to help out. He is now being held at Bear County Jail on a $15,000 bond. Now to the latest in the pandemic, big news for travelers. The White House announcing that fully vaccinated foreign visitors will be allowed to travel to the United States starting November 8th. CNN's Rid Binion has the latest on these new international travel policies. November 8th, less than one month away, the official start of a wide reopening of the U.S. The White House announcing Friday fully vaccinated foreign travelers will be allowed across the border by air and land. The accepted vaccines will include FDA approved or authorized and WHO emergency use listing vaccines. It's welcome news to tourists and separated family members, some of whom have been shut out of the country for months, and those who may have gotten a full course of a vaccine not approved by the U.S., like the AstraZeneca vaccination, which is now accepted. What about testing? Fully vaccinated air travelers are still required to test negative for COVID-19 within three days of their flight's departure for the U.S. As far as unvaccinated Americans, they'll have to take a COVID-19 test within one day of their departing flight and again after arriving home. Details about what will be acceptable proof of vaccination still up in the air. Those details will be available well in advance of November 8th for the airlines, for airline passengers, and for people coming to the land border. Airlines announcing their support of the move by the Biden administration. The Airlines for America president and CEO saying, quote, the full reopening of international travel is also critical to reviving economies around the globe, reinvigorating communities, and supporting millions of jobs in the U.S. and abroad. I'm Reed Binion reporting. Well, the new international travel system bars unvaccinated foreign nationals with very limited exceptions, according to a White House official. That's right. And a reminder, people are considered fully vaccinated by the CDC two weeks after their second dose in a two dose series or two weeks after a single dose vaccine like the Johnson and Johnson. Well, 4.3 million people. That's how many people quit their jobs in August, according to the latest Labor Department survey. And it's called, being called the Great Resignation. The latest numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics show that unemployment rate across the country is 4.8%. So what are the numbers locally and what is the latest trend here in the Alamo City? Tomorrow on Leading SA at 8 a.m., CEO of Workforce Solutions Alamo, Adrian Lopez, joins us live. We're going to be discussing what they are seeing, what sectors and what job markets are most affected, and where we go from here. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Happening today, so many people going above and beyond helping our community. Our Jonathan Cotto has been spending the morning with just a few of them. These are the volunteers, part of the Altruisa International. The club has the opportunity of identifying some key issues within the community and providing help in any shape or form. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Good morning, Jonathan. How's it going? Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. We're here with the folks of Altrusa, an organization, as you mentioned, that's just dedicated uh, and putting the priority of others uh, and making it their own. And here's a little bit of what the effort has been looking along like this morning. They've been uh, stuffing these handcrafted, handmade bags for children that are going through the system, going through the child protective systems. And I'm going to go over here and visit a little bit with, with Sharon so she can explain a little bit of this effort to Sharon. Good morning. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for coming out and joining now, us. You know, we've been hanging out here this morning with y'all. Uh, once again, this is an effort that does it. It's a lot of hands on deck here. Yes, it is. Talk to me a little bit about uh, the effort that, that is taking place here. We've been working on this project since June, preparing for it. Each one of the bags is handmade, so it had to be sewn. The strings had to be put in there. 
Uh, we had to hit up every Dollar Tree between here and Austin. We've had to hit every HEB to buy books. Uh, luckily, we have a grant from Altruist International, which enabled us to put more in the bags this year. And then everything had to be counted to make sure that we had at least 300 of everything set up. And uh, now this is the actual, the easy part is stuff in the bags. And luckily, we have some great people. We've had some, a lot of the Altruistans come out today. We've also had some uh, community members come out and join us. We also have some uh, Astra kids come and join us today as well. Sharon, thank you so much for having us here, folks. If you're interested in forming part of this organization, volunteering, it's Altrusa San Antonio on Facebook for more information. Ladies, thank you so much. A round of applause for all the hard work you've been doing this morning. Max, Sarah, back to you. Good they, job, yeah, ladies. They are doing amazing work. Thank Keep you. Keep it up. Time now, 939, 60 degrees now. Well, fewer than a quarter of third generation Hispanics speak Spanish. It's according to a Pew, Pew Research survey still ahead why the language was lost over the years all right so i know you're a big fan of halloween spooky season do you do, you, <laughs> do, you do spooky season do you are you like into all that no i'm scared i'm too okay. much of it yeah well i guess you're not gonna <laughs> want to do this so there's a way you can stay in the bates hotel from the movie psycho we have the details next is that it's something that you're interested in no yeah I'm too much it's you know <laughs> All right, not a hard pass this weather. 60 degrees outside at 939 this morning. Sarah Spivey will have your full spooky fall forecast when we come back. Well, a neighborhood in Seattle is getting the Alfred Hitchcock touch this Halloween. That's right. All right, so it's all a replica of the Bates Hotel from the movie Psycho. It's the work of Richard Knowles and his best friend who made the hotel to scale. They even painted it in the shades of gray because Hitchcock shot Psycho in black and white. The rest of the year, Knowles displays a replica of the Rosebud Motel from oh. the TV show Schitt's Creek. I love that mo that show. Great show. So uh, I know hard pass from us, Sarah Spivey. Is that something you would do? Are you like into the spooky stuff? Eek, eek, eek. Hey, that is the sound eek, from eek. Psycho. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. good job. <laughs> Uh, you know, not necessarily. I don't love scary movies, but I do like suspenseful movies. Okay. Mm. So, you know, I saw Halloween again. Oh, the new one? No, 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 oh, the okay. original gotcha. Halloween. Yeah, yeah. I saw it again. It's a classic. I mean, it really, it's it's spooky, but it's not. Yeah, but afterwards, you're like tipping, to you're tiptoeing around your house. You're like, what was that noise? Uh, Maybe you are. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the forecast for the day. It's going to be a beautiful fall-like day. Maybe head to a pumpkin patch or just enjoy all of your cliche fall things that you can think of. Temperatures will be climbing to low 70s for the afternoon high. North winds today, a bit breezy, 10 to 20, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. But as soon as the sun sets, we'll see temperatures fall into the 50s tonight. It'll be chilly this evening if you have any evening plans. All right, let's take a look outside right now with a live cam. You can see it's 60 degrees north northeast winds at about 10 miles per hour and those winds are up to 15 miles per hour in New Braunfels. So we're going to have the steady north wind for most of the day. I mentioned until of course the sun sets and then it'll become calmer in nature. 59 still in Kerrville and in Hondo 55 in Rock Springs. Rock Springs got down into the 40s today. We'll probably get down into the 40s for tomorrow morning as well. And then we take a wider view here. Look how cold it is in the panhandle. 44 in Amarillo and Lubbock, although they were in the 30s just about an hour ago. So this is a potent cold front, our first real strong cold front of the season. And it's bringing in some drier air behind it as well. Dew points in the teens across parts of the Rockies. So much drier air is filtering in. That's why it feels amazing outside. Yesterday, this time of the day, we were dealing with fog and high temperatures horrible humidity out there and that is not the case as this high pressure system is going to settle over. So here's what the next about 48 hours or so looks like. Some Pacific moisture will stream in giving us those high thin cirrus clouds but the Pacific moisture will not be at the surface. It'll stay nice and dry all day. We'll just see those wispy thin cirrus clouds out there. 72 for the afternoon high and then by tomorrow morning that's when I think we will be able to dip into the 40s briefly around the San Antonio metro area. 
about our chilliest morning of the season likely and then in the afternoon getting up to about 73 degrees. So another day a lot like today, uh, just a very beautiful fall like forecast for us will be cool tomorrow morning as well and a little bit warmer for the morning. So Tuesday onward, it does look like uh, the reason for that is going to be an increase in humidity. So we'll have a few days here with very pleasant weather through at least Monday and then by Tuesday you'll notice slight mugginess in the air, but it's really not going to be all that bad because look at these high temperatures. We're only going to be able to get into the low 80s even with the return of that humidity. So the next few days soak it up, enjoy some time outdoors. It's going to be really pleasant and then another cool front will arrive uh, Thursday into Friday and that'll set our temperatures down into the 70s for the highs and we may be able to squeeze out a little bit of extra rain too Thursday and Friday. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 946, 62 degrees out. Well, keeping the Hispanic heritage alive after the break, we're breaking down why the Spanish language may have been lost among third generation Hispanics. A Pew Research study found that nearly 70% of second generation Latinos in the United States are bilingual and fewer than a quarter of third generation Hispanics actually speak Spanish. I spoke with Latinos from both generations to hear about their personal stories on how the language may have been lost. Third generation Latinos who don't speak Spanish are not uncommon. Arguably one of the most influential Latinas of our lifetime was third generation and didn't speak Spanish fluently. Yes, La Reina, it is well known Selena didn't speak Spanish growing up. She learned it later in life as she rose to fame. Other third generation Latinos who don't fluently speak Spanish, a pair of prominent political figures, the Castro brothers. Congressman Joaquin Castro says his grandmother spoke mainly Spanish, but he says after his parents were punished for speaking Spanish at school, he and his brother, former San Antonio mayor and presidential candidate Julian Castro, were taught English. He was beaten out of a generation of people. And also, if you look over the years at other immigrant groups, whether it was Italians or Germans or French, whoever, uh, over time, uh, there's always there's a, a loss of language. Norma Ochoa is 70 years old. Her first language was Spanish. And while in school in San Antonio in second grade, she says a teacher shamed her for speaking Spanish in the classroom. And it made an impact on her. I felt she demeaned me and I felt that uh, I wasn't good enough to be there. And I just didn't I didn't want to go to school. So after that, you know, after maybe a week or two in school, of having all that cast upon me, I just felt like I didn't belong there. That ostracization led to the decision to only teach English to her children. I definitely decided that uh, I was not going to let this happen to my daughters. Norma's adult daughter, Nicole, says she knows her mother did this out of love and protection. She doesn't blame second generation parents for not teaching their children Spanish, but society from that era. So I felt very separated from my culture. I felt very, um, I wasn't considered Anglo and I wasn't considered Hispanic, so then where did I fall? So what I really enjoyed about this story is just hearing all the different stories. You know, every every generation has a different story. Um, you know, some generations that's not true. Some generations, uh, some third Hispanic generations actually speak Spanish, and their parents didn't experience that. You know, getting punished for speaking Spanish on the border town. So it it just depends on the different stories and stuff. But what Castro said, I thought was really telling. He said, it doesn't make someone less Hispanic if they don't speak Spanish. They should be accepted and be able to embrace all parts of their culture. Yeah, and people can watch the full story at .com. Yes. There you go. Time now, 952, 62 degrees out. Well, the pandemic has hit many people hard, but our children are also suffering. Tomorrow on GMSA, how to help your child with depression. One last look at the pollen count. Molds are high. Ragweed, fall elm, pigweed, and grass are low. It's 64 degrees. We're going to spend most of the day in the 60s today. A high temperature of only 72. North winds at 10 to 20, gusting up to 25. But tonight, those winds will calm. It will get chilly tonight. 49 for the morning low. 73 for the afternoon high tomorrow. And then we'll be in the 70s on Monday with a little bit of a return of some mugginess by Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But our highs will only be in the 80s. Another front arrives into Friday, setting us back down into the 70s. All right, so with all this cool weather, you'll be perfect. What? Some barbecue. <gasps> hey, yo. Oh, oh, I'm, just, I'm just like here, just like waving hey, at guys. you. Hey, guys. Hey. 
here. <laughs> David, you're going to give us a little uh, preview, talk about your episode that's airing just in just a couple of minutes right after the show. Um, the food on today's episode, Ooh. the... The dumplings, dumplings look the really calzones. Good. So good. Oh my gosh. It's the Nepali style dumplings, and I've never had anything like that before. And the juicy ones, that first mm -hmm. one that we tried, mm -hmm. change your life. That stuff is delicious. Where is that, look, that It's restaurant? Okay, it's in a little gas station. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's tucked away, but you gotta watch to find out what it is. It is a cool story, but man, you would not believe it. You walk up to this cute little gas station, and you're like, oh, what's that smell? It smells delicious. And then you go inside. Is this in San Antonio? This is in San Antonio. Okay, definitely. Yeah, yeah, to you gotta check it out. Real quick, though, I wanna, I wanna talk about the story that you were just talking about. Hispanic Heritage Month, um, my mother, she actually grew up speaking Spanish mm -hmm. and English in her household. Mm -hmm. And I grew up speaking English. So my mom felt really bad that I was like being, not being a part of my culture, right? And my heritage. Yeah. And so she put me in an English for a second language kindergarten course. <laughs> 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 and I tell you what, uh, Miss Zapata, if you're watching this, you're probably not, it's in California, but that was wild. It was difficult. It was hard. And I would always flip the sign to English day anytime <laughs> I had an opportunity to. And, and I, I wish I remembered all the Spanish that I learned in that. I love hearing everyone's stories. Everyone has a different story yeah. about how they learned language growing up. I know. It, it was a, I mean, I appreciate it, Mom, but that was difficult. But that was hard. <laughs> but yeah, but on today's episode, I mean, we're still honoring some Hispanic Heritage Month on the show because we have so much delicious food that's going on. But man, it is a fun show today. We're in New Braunfels at the Phoenix Saloon. Mm -hmm. Yes, at Big Burgers. It's actually the place where they invented commercial chili, like chili powder. Oh, okay. I know. I like, what is commercial chili? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know this when you watch TV, it's the, it's the stuff that's on the commercials. Um, no, it's the commercial chili powder, and they actually they they take, uh, take me on a ghost tour, and it is terrifying there. It is legitimately. Eerie. Are you about the spookiness? Are you about the spookiness? That's what I want to know because I'm not. I'm not at you all. You believe in ghosts though, because Max is like, no, ghosts aren't real. No, so I believe in at ghosts. At no so, point in my life did I ever say that. I've heard <laughs> things. I've seen things. I still don't believe, and you know, that's not like a shot at anything. But like, I just. But it's. I don't want to see it though. You know what I mean? I would be so scared. I wouldn't leave my house if I saw. Like, what? Well, hold on. Ghosts are real. But <laughs> I have seen things uh, mm -hmm. when we were doing this stuff, and it's just kind of. It's just weird. You know? Yeah. You're just kind of like, all right. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So you had calzones or strabolis? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we go inside of a pizza joint on the east side of San Antonio, and this place is serving up huge. I mean, like bigger than your head oh. calzones. Did Massive. You they Did zoomed you in it? on you for that one. I know. They're like big. <laughs> just like zoom in on there. Um, yeah. So the, we go to that place. And then we have the burgers. We also go to Rebel here in San Antonio. If you've never gone to Rebel for a date night, a dinner, even their, their brunch items, that lobster roll is out of control. Mm. I think I've been calling it Rebel. Oh. Uh, it's <laughs> could you finish the calzone? No, no, look at that thing. Challenge I accepted. I, yeah, I know, right? That's a big time. Slabby. But you can go there and watch UTSA football because they got all the screens oh. out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they got the, the birds up over there. And then, oh, and the desserts. I forgot about you guys. The look at you. Churro split, oh, right? Gosh, yes. And that's just one of many that we go over. Everything made fresh in house right there. You guys, we have a really fun episode of Texas Eats. And it, it, you got to stay to watch. I mean, the whole episode afterwards, we got college football, and it's starts in just a couple minutes. You couldn't have brought us the churros, some boys. <laughs> You're even... wasting away, Max. I oh, gotta bring it to you. I'm exactly. sorry. <laughs> you gotta help us. Hey guys, Texas Eats starts right after this.